In this week's video, we'll review a stock market signal that's only been flashed four times in the last 92 years. This is a summary slide from last week's video, June 25th. Two topics that were covered over and over again last week were incremental improvements in tech and growth stocks and the fact that we had a wide variety of what looked like a week ago failed bearish breakdowns and we know that failed bearish breakdowns can be followed by big bullish moves. As it turns out, in the following week, this week, in the past five trading sessions, the S&P 500 was up every single day. In this week's video, we'll continue to look at tech and growth and see how much additional improvement we saw this week and what it means for the market's risk reward ratio. We will be covering some still indecisive and hesitant charts. However, we don't have any evidence in hand relative to credit spreads nor in the National Financial Conditions Index at this point that are waving yellow or red flags. Here are the charts that we'll be covering. Most of the video was recorded on Thursday evening. These are the results from Friday's session, so you can see what happened on the last trading day of the week. The top portion of the chart shows NASDAQ advanced decline volume. This is the correction in the S&P 500 here where my cursor is. Major rally, big rally off the October 2002. March 2003 low in the S&P 500 here. Then we have the correction. This is what NASDAQ advanced decline volume looked like here during this correction. Similar situation, major low 2010 where my cursor is here. Big rally in the stock market. Eventually all good things come to an end. The S&P 500 has a significant and sharp correction in 2010 here. Notice once again the look of NASDAQ advanced decline volume. Thus, it might be helpful to ask an answer. How does the same chart look today? Better, worse, or about the same? This chart was printed on July 1st during the session. Thus, it's all subtle data. And as you can see on June 30th, as of month end, this chart looks significantly better than this look here or this look here. This is S&P 500 advanced decline volume as of June 30th, settled. This is something that we'd like to see improve a little bit. If we look up here, this is a relatively tepid look here. This was the sell-off that we had recently, and then the bounce. We'll keep an eye on this chart here, but it tells us to keep an open mind about worse than expected outcomes. Both the NASDAQ and the triple Qs have made new all-time highs. NASDAQ 100 up-down volume here where my cursor is, upper right-hand corner of the screen, has failed to do so. You can see it eventually did make a new high when stocks started to rally hard in November of 2020. This is not a showstopper. It's just something in the next few days that will help us better assess bull bear probabilities. This is a volume-based indicator for the NASDAQ 100. Down here, this is an issue-based indicator for the broader NASDAQ composite index. And once again, you can see here, the NASDAQ has printed a new all-time closing high after this period of consolidation. The breadth indicator has not done so yet. We did get confirmation here when the NASDAQ rallied in November of last year. Once again, not a showstopper. We see improvement here, but we'd like to see a little bit more sometime after the close on July 1st. The purpose of these charts and the purpose of these two breadth indicators is not to predict anything. It helps us assess the probabilities in real time. If we move into this area here, that's bullish improvement and bullish probabilities tend to improve. Conversely, if we move down here and get a bearish breakdown in the indicator, that would increase bearish probabilities. Leveraged loans late in the session on July 1st. Nothing particularly alarming here, but we don't have a breakout yet. It's possible that that would come after NFP on Friday, July 2nd. As always, we'll learn something either way here. 
A lot of the charts that we'll cover in this week's video help us with two sets of probabilities. Number one, the general health of the market, and number two, market leadership. This is the NASDAQ composite during the session on Friday, July 1st, around 3.03 p.m. Eastern Time. Here's the bottom. Here's an A to B move. We've retraced almost exactly 50% of that move. This is step one of a probabilistic trend change. Need to see more here from the NASDAQ. But it's also fair to say this is observable improvement in here that began in mid to early May of this year. Dow Jones Industrial Average, this is the bearish breakdown that we covered a couple of weeks ago. This is the failed bearish breakdown look that we covered last week. We said often failed bearish breakdowns turn out to be bullish signals. As of 3.09 p.m. on Thursday, July 1st, we still have what looks like a failed bearish breakdown that is turning into a bullish signal. This chart still has some work to do. If really good things are supposed to happen in the stock market walking forward, it's highly unlikely that the Dow is not going to clear this intraday high here from May 10th. That may happen soon, but it hasn't happened yet. It's a quarterly chart of the S&P 500 dating all the way back to 1930 on the left side of your screen. This is CCI or the Commodity Channel Index on the bottom of the screen. Something extremely rare just happened at quarter end as of June 30th, 2021. As you can see with this thin horizontal line here, it's extremely rare for quarterly CCI to hit this level. In fact, it's only occurred three previous times in the last 92 years. Year end 1954, September 30th, 1980, year end 1995. Noteworthy that this point here this point here and this point here all occur within the context of a secular bull market. There's one additional pattern on your screen here. You can see during this period of sideways long-term consolidation, oversold, second period of oversold, sideways consolidation, oversold look number one, oversold look number two here. Very, very similar situation during this period of consolidation. Oversold look number one, oversold look number two. As it turns out, this point here is 12 years from this point here. And this point here is also 12 years from this point here, telling us that the 1954 case has two extremely rare things in common with the present day or quarter end June 30th, 2021. And in this case, we really did not have an imminent Nordique phase. The S&P 500 gained an additional 26.4% over the next year. And then you can see over the next three years, eventually we slowed down and had a big give back in here. But five years later, the S&P 500 was 66% higher. The 1995 case is different. We pretty much went higher and never looked back. One year later, 22% higher. Two years later, 57% higher. Then 100% higher, 137. And then some give back into year five, 114. And the 1980 case is different from the 1954 case and the 1995 case, helping us keep an open mind about a wide range of outcomes on a wide range of time frames. As noted previously, in the 1954 case, the market went up 26% from the day that is similar to June 30th of 2021. Thus, it might be helpful to know what do the one-year drawdowns look like in each case from the date of the signal. 1954 happened relatively quickly, less than 4% here where my cursor is. 1980, a little bit harsher, double digits, and it happened over a very long period of time. This is calendar days here. The 1995 case, very shallow drawdown, less than 3%. It occurred 10 days after the date of the signal. And in the 1995 case, really, really good things happened over the next five years. 
also noteworthy. Not only is a look like this associated with bullish longer term outcomes, if you look at this chart, you really can't find a look like this in here, right before really bad things happen, or in here, right before a long term period of consolidation, nor can you find one here. You can pause your video player here. This is basically a pattern recognition exercise. You can make an argument that the 50 month moving average in the gold S&P 500 ratio, price action, the look of ADX here where my cursor is, black relative to green and red, and the look of RSI in this box here is similar. So this look in here, this look in here, and this look in here. Price action wise, we have not on a quarterly basis exceeded this low here where my cursor is. That's similar to year end 1998, which is also quarter end 1231 1988. It's also noteworthy, similarities in the blue boxes and a lot of similarities before that in the purple boxes. Thus, the gold S&P 500 ratio is telling us to keep an open mind that the present day might look similar to year end 1988. And as we always say, this is not just a bunch of lines on a chart. All of this speaks to investor psychology, their tolerance for risk, expectations about inflation, future economic outcomes, Fed policy, fiscal policy, and all of it is tied into longer term demographics. Thus, it might be helpful to know, walking forward from year end 1231, 1988, how did the stock market perform and how did a basket, a diversified basket of commodities perform? Despite this improving look in gold relative to stocks here, which is similar to this improving look here, stocks absolutely annihilated a diversified basket of commodities from year end 1988 or January 1st, 1989 into the peak, the end of the secular bull run that occurred on March 24th of the year 2000. The S&P 500 tacked on an additional 450% over that period. Over the same period, a basket of diversified physical commodities lost 16%. And if we look at our current chart of GLD relative to SPY, a monthly chart at month end June 30th, 2021, on a monthly basis, we have made a lower low here. This look here is significantly different from this look here. Hence, our allocation to gold, significantly different in here than it is in the present day. That may change, but we need to see improvement on this chart. How does a chart like this look today? But instead of looking at gold relative to the S&P 500, this time we look at a diversified basket of commodities, physical commodities relative to the S&P 500. As you can see, there's been significant improvement in here. However, this is still in, unequivocally in a long-term downtrend. Price is below a downward sloping 50 month moving average. Contrast that with this period in here where gold did outperform stocks fairly significantly with price above an upward sloping 50 month moving average. None of it predicts anything, but all of it helps us assess present day probabilities based on the facts that we have in hand today. Similar situation. If you want to know why our exposure to foreign stocks is next to nothing, here's the answer. Covered this chart many times, June 30th, 2021. This is the 15 month rate of change for the value line geometric index. This tells us this is an extremely rare rally. We've only hit this blue horizontal line one, two, three previous times. 1983, secular bull lasted until March of 2000. 2004 is not a secular bull, but the S&P 500 tacked on some impressive gains into October of 2007. In 2010, the market is still rising in 2021. The longer a market goes sideways, the bigger the move that we can expect to get. 
when we either get a bullish breakout as we have today or a bearish breakdown. This chart speaks to longer term probabilities, allowing us to maintain a long term focus as long as the data allows, but also respecting that givebacks in the value line geometric index, givebacks, givebacks, and givebacks would not be shocking after such a massive rally, similar to the massive rally we've seen in the present day. Not a prediction, but it simply helps us keep an open mind about a wide range of outcomes on a wide range of time frames. What could possibly cause a giveback similar to this one, this one, this one, or this one? A tapering of Fed asset purchases. You can pause your video player to read this recent quote. This chart is telling us that we should not get too locked in on our recent memory of how markets operate. This is the year 2000 here. This is the year 2001. This is the look of the Dow relative to the S&P 500 between 2001 here and 2020 here. This currently looks different from everything that we know looking back 20 years. This chart tells us we should be open to historical analogies that go a lot further back than the year 2000. Very, very similar to the message from the gold S&P 500 ratio. It's a monthly chart of FXL, a technology ETF relative to SPY dated June 30th, 2021 or month end. Key takeaway, ratio remains in a full bore bullish look with price above an upward sloping moving average. In this case, the 50 month moving average. The ratio is also still making a series of higher highs and higher lows at this point. Similar situation here. What once acted as resistance may now act as support. FDN Internet monthly relative to the S&P 500. Also full bore bullish look. Many of the charts that we're covering in this week's video speak to leadership and asset allocation decisions. This is small cap relative to large cap. This is the long term trend here, this dotted trend line. It remains down. The intermediate term trend is up to indecisive. This is the A to B move from the March low in 2020 to the high in March of 2021. Thus far, the ratio has come back to about the 38.2% retracement. What once acted as resistance here may now act as support. This chart was printed July 1st at 11.56 a.m. Eastern Time during Thursday's session. It's possible many of these indecisive charts will become a little bit more clear on Friday after the monthly labor report is released. Under our approach, we don't guess when we have an indecisive look. We wait for the market to make a move and wait for the probabilities to shift one way or another. Common theme, indecisive, SCHA, small cap relative to TLT from the March 23rd low, recently broke the trend line. It's possible that this is a failed bearish breakdown here. However, we need to see some more improvement and really get up into this area up here before we can make that claim. We'll show many charts like this, all of them. If we get step three, which would be somewhat of a lower low look in this area here, then obviously overall bearish probabilities would increase. If we can move up and exceed this high here and get a breakout from this consolidation pattern into this area here, then bullish probabilities increase. But right now it's simply indecisive on many fronts. RSP relative to SPY, incredibly indecisive. This is the longer term trend, the downward sloping trend line. This is the trend from the relative low that was made in September of 2020. It's an uptrend. If the ratio can get here, the longer it stays here, the more meaningful it becomes from a bullish perspective in terms of RSP outperforming SPY. Conversely, the same is true here 
relative to bear shots right now well above the 38.2 50% and 61.8% retracements from this A to B move here where my cursor's moving back and forth but the ratio right now is literally at the intersection of this trend line and this trend line similar concepts here RSP relative to tech this A to B move here retraced roughly 50% of that move we're still above this upward sloping trend line that would be the good news for RSP relative to F tech the bad news would be that this was a higher high relative to this high now we have a lower low here relative to this closing low from an asset allocation perspective we'll learn something if the ratio moves in this direction and holds or if we move in this direction here and get a break of this upward sloping trend line now we're looking at tech versus equal weight on a much longer term time frame this is a monthly chart July 1st here's the relative low in 2016 this is an A to B move here we're still above the 38.2 percent retracement above these trend lines and prices above an upward sloping moving average that's the good news for tech the bad news is the ratio has been making a series of lower lows this chart simply tells us to be open to a move in this direction this looks like a bullish breakout now it looks like a failed bullish breakout or at best indecisiveness in here the prior trend was down against TLT this is a bullish attempt so far it looks like a failed attempt that may change but that's the look of the chart on July 1st like many of these charts hoping to get a little bit more resolution after NFP or non-farm payrolls on Friday a move either here or a move here we would learn a lot more than a move like this defensive staples relative to tech kind of a defensive look here with a higher high relative to this high but now we've got the last thing that happened in the ratio a multi-week multi-month low it's hard to get too bearish on the general market with a look like this it's still indecisive but this is what happened last and this low happened after this high and this retracement here is more than the 38.2 more than the 50 and more than the 61.8 daily chart XRT relative to TLT indecisive in the short term longer term trend line trend line this is the highest high here so this is our current trend right now what this looks like is rather than a correction in the ratio a price correction thus far this is really a time correction just simply moving sideways this is common however it doesn't tell you that we're going to move in this direction right now we favor that because this looks like a false breakdown and a turn but it's not uncommon to move like this and then plunge once again maybe NFP will help us get up here or help us get here really everything that we said about the last chart conceptually applies to semiconductors relative to bonds it's hard to get overly excited a about the general market B about semiconductors or C the sustainability of the rally when semiconductors haven't made a relative high versus TLT since early April of this year you may recall the S&P 500 took off in here in early November after the US election and you can see the ratio clearly makes a higher high in here and look at this consolidation it has an upward bias to it the market's consolidating in this area here and this still has an upward bias not the case now it's sideways and that's true of many charts another indecisive mess in the short run internet stocks FDN relative to the S&P 500 this A to B move here we've retraced almost exactly 50 percent right here we're below the 61.8 this is a step one a break of a trend line really need to see more on a relative basis to get overly excited about one relative to the other it doesn't mean bad things are going to happen in either of them there's just no clear leadership here either 
Now here's a chart that's looking a little bit better. One of the reasons why we've been looking at FDN is it is a relative leader in the short run. As you can see here, on a closing basis, it has made a higher high here relative to these highs here. On June 30th, it looked like somewhat of a retest look here. July 1st, about the same, basically flat to up. There's no resolution here, but on July 1st, it's leaning slightly bullish. Why? Well, first of all, we're above this high and above this high, and the dominant trend is still up favoring internet stocks relative to TLT. And the last thing the ratio did was make a higher high. It really hasn't made a significant lower low really anywhere in this area here. FDN TLT's done it on a closing basis. Now we'd like to see it hold. That's not the case yet with FTEC TLT. As of the close on July 1st, we had not exceeded this closing high here. Once again, maybe NFP will push us up here or push us down here. But right now we're still consolidating sideways relative to this move here that began in April. So while FTEC in isolation is making new all-time highs, it has not done so yet relative to TLT, and it's not even close to making a new high relative to SPY. Looks like it's trying to turn here, but similar to some of the other charts, we're hovering around the 61.8 to 50% retracement of this A to B move. For the most part here, resolution will help us with asset allocation decisions. And another breakdown of this chart, it'd be very, very difficult to say that that wouldn't increase bearish probabilities for the general market, given the heavy weighting to tech from a sector perspective in the S&P 500. We'll see how it plays out. QQQ TLT had a higher close here, but as of the close on July 1st, could not hold it. But there's no question, since this point here, this ratio is trying to improve, and the trend before this consolidation was clearly up. This is the 61.8% retracement here of this A to B drop. How does this help us? If we move above the 61.8% retracement, we move beyond what looks like a normal retracement within the context of an existing downtrend, and now it's starting to look more like a trend change. Similar concepts here, VUG TLT has yet to nail down a new closing high. The last closing high was made in late April. It's possible it could come very, very soon. And VUG relative to the S&P 500 last made a closing high in late August, early September. However, shorter term trend is trying to improve a little bit remains in a downtrend however that appears to be trying to change but this ratio still has work to do hasn't even gotten back to this trend line yet schx relative to tlt schx is basically the same from a movement perspective and contents perspective relative to spy and vu break of the trend line here this looks like a bearish breakdown as of the close on July 1st, now it looks like a false bearish breakdown. XLI TLT, we held here at a logical area. However, still work to do relative to this high that was made in May. Semiconductors have been performing well recently. However, this ratio here, semiconductors relative to SPY, this is a lower high relative to the high that was made in April. And this high is a lower high relative to the high that was made back in February. The good news is this somewhat looks like a false bearish breakdown here below this level. This is a lower low relative to this low. That false bearish breakdown narrative would gain some traction if we can get to the other side of this green line. And more importantly, exceed this high and this high. SMH has been moving quite nicely in isolation, but last made a higher high in the ratio relative to TLT back in early April. Similar to many charts here, indecisive, but short term it looks like it's leaning to trying to get back on track and reestablishing this trend. But we have to see this movement. 
Hasn't happened yet. SPYTLT as of the close on Thursday, July 4th, the Thursday before the Friday labor report. Here's a high here. This is a lower high, and then we've been making a series of lower highs since late April, early May. That would be the bad news. The good news would be, once again, somewhat of a false bearish breakdown look here. We're trying to nail that down, but we have to get over here. Williams percent R, higher here than it was here. That's a bullish divergence. This line slopes up where my cursor is. The ratio slopes down. That would be price falling. Momentum divergence telling us to be open to, not predicting, open to a move here. RSI also looks like it's trying to turn a little bit in the true strength index in terms of white space between black and red here. Really the best look that we've seen since March of this year. And you can see here in March, the ratio was still rising. How about rate of change that we've covered in the past? The 10 trading day rate of change, that would be two trading weeks or two calendar weeks. Back above zero, that's a good sign. Three week or 15 trading days, back above zero, all things being equal, that's a good sign. We're not quite there yet on the four week or 20 trading day rate of change. As of July 1st, it was still negative. I can make an argument that this also could clear up one way or another sometime in the next few trading sessions. We'll just see how it plays out. Like this look here, this is improving a little bit in the short run, and this is improving a little bit. Need to see a little more here and need to see a little more here. The three ratio charts on your screen are as of approximately 2.50 p.m. Eastern time on Friday, July 2nd. Common theme here. This is a clear downtrend favoring the market over technology stocks, a clear intermediate downtrend favoring the market over semiconductors. Similar story here, clear intermediate term downtrend against growth stocks relative to the S&P 500. In this area here, from a risk reward perspective, it makes sense to underweight tech semis and growth and or take profits in these areas here. The improvement that we've seen in recent weeks basically says really doesn't make a lot of sense to underweight these areas at this point, nor have we seen enough improvement yet to warrant a serious overweight. All three of these ratio charts have reclaimed some important areas shown on your screen, and we also have some hopeful looks on momentum here, here, and here. To summarize, after the close on Friday, July 2nd, it still looks like we have a failed bearish breakdown. Failed bearish breakdowns can be bullish as we covered a week ago. Tech and growth continue to show relative improvement. Some of the charts that we covered this week still have work to do even as of the close on July 2nd. The big picture remains very constructive at this point. However, there is zero downside to remaining open to a Fed slash complacency induced reversal in the markets. History tells us that if we become complacent or overconfident, that can end up being extremely harmful. Very important point. Being open to something is significantly different from being bearish. Continue to take it day by day, making no assumptions about what next week, next month, or next quarter looks like. And we all know the only way that any of this works is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management LLC or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein.
CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.